So my own work still uh, concerns chirp to pulse amplification. I stayed with that. Uh, it, it just turned out when I came back uh, to Canada and came to Waterloo, uh, my husband uh, was leaving a job at AT&T Bell Labs and I got to get his equipment. And he had in, uh, developed a two color short pulse oscillator. And so when I brought it back with me and he took an industry job, I thought, well, what do I do with a two color short pulse oscillator? I now have two totally different systems. Uh, but both do that, and that's because a lot of the nonlinear optics I want to do requires two laser pulses that have two different colors. So what I try to do is get lasers uh, that nobody else has. So in one case, I'm taking my two colors and I mix them in a nonlinear crystal, and it actually subtracts the one energy from the other, and I make this very low energy light. And right now, there's very few coherent, which is what a laser is, is a coherent source of light, very few sources that have that wavelength and certainly not short pulses in that wavelength. So I'm hoping that if I can do it in an efficient way, but the point is that other people don't have that light. So spectroscopists, people that need light out there and certain types of the larger molecules will have signatures out there and it's called fingerprint. There's a molecular fingerprint region. Much of the work is being done at three microns. That's partly because a lot of the molecules have that. It's also where the lasers are easier to be made. There's two faculty members, Joe Sanderson and myself. And Joe Sanderson's an expert on molecular spectroscopy and in particular this one type of tool that we use where if you have a molecule, I'm just going to use two atoms for my molecule, uh, and you could ionize both of these, then you have two charges sitting very close together. And so from our first year physics, we teach, we, we charge up pith balls and they fly apart. But these are so close together, it's called Coulomb explosion spectroscopy. So if you can take two electrons, one from each one, and blow it apart, you can measure the kinetic energy as it leaves. It tells you how close they were. So now with a more complicated molecule, <laughs> we can maybe excite a transition and do this and try to make what Joe likes to call molecular movies. So that's the goal. He's the expert in this. So my other two color laser is trying to take away if we could make single femtosecond. And that's just shorter than the lightest molecule is hydrogen. Those are the lightest atoms. It oscillates on two femtosecond time scale. So if I can get my single femtosecond laser that's intense enough to strip electrons from both sides, then we can maybe make molecular movies of even the lightest bonds. I, very few people get to win a medal, so I don't know that I would suggest that as a goal. I think what you should always want to do is just find something that you find either fun, like I did, I loved playing with these lasers, or just a fascinating thing to think about, because I think if you really find what you love to do, and, and scientists, mathematicians, academics, we get great jobs. We actually get to spend our day having fun at it. And so if you can find that topic that really excites you, you'll work hard. And if you're working hard, you'll do your best. And if you're doing your best, things, things happen.